Hi guys, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing my August and September wrap up. It is going to be a very, very short wrap up because in the last two months I have barely read anything, which is great. <laughs> Not really, but I did manage to complete my reading challenge or my extended reading challenge for this year. So I know I set 12 books to finish for 2020 and I did complete that around June I would have to say so I decided maybe I would read 18 uh, instead and I have managed to read 18 so <laughs> I'm still quite happy even though I only read three books in the last month but we'll get right into it. Also I feel like you've seen every angle of my room at this point but this is just has the best lighting because it's in front of my window but in August I read The Garden of Lost Secrets by A.M. Howell. Now this one here is a middle grade novel where a girl is sent off to live with her auntie and uncle during the war as her mum has to go and look after her dad. It's a very interesting read because when she arrives at her auntie and uncle's house she spies this young boy in the garden at night. And in the daytime, she never sees him around, so she doesn't understand whether it's an apparition, you know, something supernatural, or if this boy exists. And so she goes out and discovers on her own. So I actually finished this in one sitting, and I do think it comes down to the fact that it's a middle grade novel, so it is quite easy to read and digest. I definitely think that it is interesting at some aspects. There is a lot of, I guess deeper meaningful stuff in here that I wouldn't have expected from a middle grade but I definitely think that comes down to the context of things the fact that this is set in a war that the situation is quite bleak for the people in this novel and that there is a certain revelation in here where some characters aren't good or bad you know there's a gray area and you kind of have to really take things into perspective and understand or appreciate your situation sometimes and your privilege etc so that's kind of what I got, gained from this book I'm fairly sure I gave it maybe a three and a half stars out of five um, for the time I did quite like it I probably would recommend it if you were at a middle grade age at around I would say maybe I don't know like 12 to 15 is that middle grade maybe younger, maybe like 10 to 13 maybe. But yeah, so that was what I read in August. And then in September, I ended up finishing White Rage by Carol Anderson, which was a nonfiction book that I have been reading in the last two to three months. It is a explanation or basically a nonfiction that recounts black history. So from the very start of when slavery was abolished up until pretty much now during the Obama presidential era. To me it was an eye-opening read because I haven't read a lot or understand a lot of black history or even American history for that matter besides what we learn in high school here in Australia which is really just about the Civil War and that's basically it I would have to say. I think there is a lot to take out of it. It is very confrontational it is very dense but I took a lot of notes when I was reading it and I think that's the one thing that really helped me through it is that I was trying to process things as I went and I didn't try to read it all in one sitting. I could fully appreciate what was in that book and it's really just made me want to read more and learn more as I go. I didn't give it a rating because I feel like to me it's really hard to write non-fiction novels especially something like this where I'm learning from it. I'm not particularly writing it for an entertainment value or you know something like that. Like I definitely would recommend it, but I just don't feel comfortable putting a rating on it. That's all. Then that's just me personally. And then the last book I read was A Song of Wraths and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown. Again, I started this, I would have to say about two months ago. I came to a realization that maybe I wasn't in a reading slump. I was just more really not enjoying reading thick books. This was only 400 pages but it just yeah I just was really lazy at, during the last two months but I finished it. I really enjoyed I would say like the last half, last third because the pace really quickened, the characters had more of interaction, the magical element was a lot more explored and played a bigger part towards the latter end of the book. I definitely enjoyed the 
scenes where the characters interacted with each other more because it gave them a bit more dimension and the narration like and the dialogue between them made it feel more I guess realistic as opposed to just reading from their point of view only the point of views do swap so I'm fairly sure everyone would know about this book already on booktube um, but it is a fantasy YA centered around African folklore mythology where two characters have to basically try and kill each other uh, to fulfill their own kind of journey quest destiny um, but along the way they realize that there's underlying emotions <laughs> going on when they meet each other so yeah I gave this about a four out of five stars uh, purely because of the ending of it. Um, it really did pick up and that's when I was a lot more invested but also because of this one particular line where Karina, the female protagonist, asks the male protagonist and I'm really sorry if this is a spoiler. It, it shouldn't be but if you haven't read this and you don't want to hear it then you can kind of skip forward. But she asks him, if I asked you to catch me the moon with your bare hands, how would you do it? And that just got me, that line, that entire line. So that's why I have a little tab there. So yeah, I definitely think that I'm a lot more invested in, in the character's story now, the story progression as well, and I'm really excited for the next installment. But it does take a while to get into. I would have to say maybe the first 150 to 200 pages. There is a lot to take in with names like the world, building, the mythology aspect to it but it's super interesting and Roseanne um, A. Brown really fleshes that out quite well you just have to have a good memory and it's probably better to read this within maybe three days or so because then you have that fresh memory whereas for me I kind of dragged it on so that's just based on my experience but still four out of five stars a solid read I do have a spring TBR that I just recently put up and you can definitely watch it I'll leave a card somewhere here uh, and that's just kind of what I'm aiming to read going into well, spring September which just passed and then October November um, but hopefully by the end of this year I would have read more than 18 books uh, which is exciting to me because I haven't read anything more than like 10 books in the last two and three years <laughs> but that is all I hope you guys are having a lovely day um, anywhere that you are and that you are staying safe and healthy and happy as always any other links and resources will be linked in the bio of the description below can you can tell I'm rushing through this but yes <laughs> that is all and I shall see you guys soon